obviously size does matter. Um, and I study fossil marine mammals, and what you see here is the largest uh, living mammal, which is also the largest animal ever to have lived, the blue whale, along with its uh, the smallest whale, which is one of the small porpoises. And these are obviously marine creatures. Here's the largest living land animal, the African elephant, with that dot is the smallest living land mammal, which is a shrew. And what you can see is they have a, a huge range of size in both terrestrial and marine organisms, but that size range is completely different and the marine ones are much larger. The question is, how did this evolve over time? So uh, a group that I've worked with uh, for a long time has looked at this in terrestrial mammals. What you see in the top graph is the largest mammals over time. The big red line is the Cretaceous tertiary mass extinction, which caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. You can see there's a huge surge in body size across that boundary, and then it plateaus. If you look at different continents, you can see that each continent follows that same pattern. And you look at each group of organisms, they follow that same pattern of dramatic increase and then a plateau over time. The question is, is this true of marine mammals? And when I say marine mammals, I mean things like um, whales, dolphins, and porpoises, uh, sea cows, and seals, sea lions, and walruses, and then some extinct groups that are at least partially marine. I make the same graph for these organisms. What you can see is that most of the time, the largest body size is occupied by a whale, occasionally by a sea cow, but it does not plateau. Uh, it actually just increases over time with this little uh, sort of uh, strange peak here uh, early on, but after that it basically just increases through time and is still increasing today. Now, in this graph we're comparing um, each marine group to its closest living terrestrial relative, and you can see the terrestrial guys all do this plateau, they get big plateau, get big plateau, and each marine group increases dramatically over time. So not only as a whole do they show this pattern, but each clade shows the same pattern, which is dramatically different from that of its terrestrial relatives. So here we're looking at diversity. Some uh, suggestion has been made that maybe they're just there's more of them over time, so we're getting a broader range of variation. And that's not true. In fact, if you focus on the whales, the whales are two to three times as diverse about 15 million years ago as they are today. In fact, their diversity is on the decline and yet they're still getting bigger. So it's clearly not just the number of different kinds of whales or other marine mammals that's causing this phenomenon, oh God. Um, uh, and you can see here, I looked at the first differences in diversity and mass and they're completely uncorrelated. That's good, that means it's not being caused by diversity. Uh, what is a factor is that there's two different kinds of whales, ones with teeth, ones that filter feed, and this pattern is clearly being driven by the filter feeders which use a very different feeding mechanism where they engulf large uh, quantities of food. And in fact, if you look at their physiology, it's much more efficient to do this at larger body size, which is increasing over time. There's been some suggestion that, um, that they could still increase in body size to about two to three times the size of a modern whale based on their morphology today. Otherwise, their jaws are going to snap if they get too much bigger. And you can see the range is getting bigger. And that's the, the range is getting bigger over time, and I'll say thank you. Yeah. <laughs>